We're clearing farm right now in Glenspey, New York, and we thought it was a perfect opportunity to finally dive in, yes. do a little mukbang, yes, and talk all things Kelly with one of my Belly favorite Bebop. foods, Kelly <laughs> Bebop. It's me. I'm Kelly. Peacock. I am a writer, content marketing writer for Thought Catalog and Chop Catalog. I also write poetry, which is really nice. So I'm hoping to get my book out next year. We got legit oat milk because you know we need it with a sip I bun. wish we had chocolate syrup so we could just, just like put chocolate syrup on the strawberries oh and the my milk. God. Oh. oh my god. Wow. I love cinnamon buns. Oh. We perfected these. We really did. Not too crispy, oh not too god. doughy. It's not. Mm -hmm. I love oat milk too. Oatly really slaps. Like I haven't had an oat milk that's better. So you and I met at work. Mm -hmm. We had a job. <laughs> love that for us. We had a job. <laughs> no, the fact that I had a full-on job. We shared our love for the nitro cold brew. Shout out Rise. We had mm. Rise in the office. It was a time. It was a time to be alive. Oh yeah. And we also shared a lot of meals together. Mm -hmm. But I think it's interesting because mm -hmm. as we became closer friends, I learned more about you and your relationship with food. It's like not as simple and baseline as some people would assume and that's yeah. kind of a huge issue that we talk about on the channel is like the fact that we can look at people and jump to conclusions about their relationships with food their mm -hmm. diets their relationship with their bodies based off our own preconceived notions of like what their body is mm -hmm. from the gaze of society or whatever like it's kind of it's very damaging but yeah. i think you've been very intuitive with food i just want to hear more like what was your relationship with food like growing up and where are you now with it? Because I know that's um, probably progressed a bit. When I was 10, so I was in fifth grade, was when I first started to notice that there was, like, something wrong with my digestive system, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until maybe college, I think, like, a few years ago that I was actually, like, diagnosed with IBS. But... Apparently, according to the doctors that I went to, you can't actually diagnose someone with it. You have to do all these other tests to rule it out. And then they're like, all right, yeah, I guess you have it. Mm -hmm. So I went and I was like, hey, I'm like pretty sure I have this. Like I've looked up the symptoms. I have everything. I'm pretty sure. I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And they were like, all right, well, let's do all these tests to rule it out. And then they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, you do. You do have IBS. And you're like, thank I'm like, you. like, cool. <laughs> so I just spent so much money for you to tell me what I already knew, but yeah, for from like fifth grade to college, it was just me trying to figure out honestly what was wrong with me, like what was wrong, like why I would eat certain foods and I would be in so much pain, like to the point where like I break out in like hot rash because it was my body's like fight or flight mode of like you're in pain something's gonna happen I don't know like when do you remember like certain foods where that happened definitely dairy yeah it's always and that's issue. hard when you're little because you're like always going for ice cream and stuff. yeah always ice cream oh. my mom's like drink milk for your bones like mm. so I'd be like okay milk ice cream cool mm -hmm. if I was just eating a lot of sugar that would be an issue I don't know I had a fast metabolism when I was younger too I couldn't see anything as I was like eating so much because I had a fast metabolism, and then as I got older, I was, I mean, I grew into my body, right. but it wasn't until college that, like, I knew what was wrong with me, then I was able to, like, do, like, start some research on, like, what it is, what the symptoms are, like, how other people deal with it, like, what foods I should and shouldn't eat. It's very restrictive, and it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> Fighting those, like, cravings and those urges and like wanting to enjoy the food I eat, it's it's hard. It's it's, like it's so hard because I'm still trying to figure it out. Right. I'm slowly but surely getting better, but there are some things that I'm like not entirely sure of. Like fish, I don't know. What are like the top mm. five? You couldn't pay me to eat these foods <laughs> for the for the sake of my stomach feeling like insane. Dairy, like ice cream, mm -hmm. like pizza. Weirdly enough, like yeah, it has issues, but it's not as bad as ice cream. Well, because ice cream is like thick and like. Mm -hmm. So dairyish. Mm -hmm. Dairyish. Um, New word. <laughs> it's an extension of grownish. Watch it every, <laughs> seven, every Tuesday. It's seven, Great job. Seven six central. <laughs> grownish, blackish. Yes, we love it. Um, <laughs> bananas, avocados, beans, and like super spicy foods. 
I'm learning about what foods I should and shouldn't follow, like the low FODMAP diet. The FODMAP, there's like foods that are like foods to avoid, foods that like you can't eat. And then when I look up like, okay, what are some good recipes for people with IBS? They're like, oh, good smoothie. That's healthy. That's good. Or avocado toast on like gluten-free bread or something. And you're like, I can't have avocados. Like, I can't even have I that. Have bananas. I'm sure there's other people that are like, there's things that we collectively IBSers can have, but like certain bodies, I guess, are a little bit special. So they're like, nope, no bananas, no avocados. It's really hard trying to like find foods and then having to figure out recipes that work. Because like a lot of recipes that they're saying for like IBS, like there's some with like chickpeas and like beans and stuff, but that is also a trigger, a trigger. for me. Because I'm like, I want to eat healthy, mm -hmm. but it's hard when I'm very limited on right. my options like very restrictive how do you maintain like a healthy relationship with food when you're constantly thinking about it because i think that's something i talk about with people a lot i mean especially with eating disorders which we'll, we'll get into binge eating in uh -huh. a bit but when it comes to you know creating a balanced intuitive lifestyle how do you do that? I know right now we're drinking coffee and eating these, and I'm sure, like, if anyone was looking at you, they'd be like... They'd be like, she has IBS. But you have IBS, and it's mm -hmm. like... What are you doing? I personally think it's really important to have the balance between, like, mental, physical, emotional mm -hmm. health with treating that, like, actual symptomatic yeah. thing. Yeah. So, yeah, how do you find your balance? I know you have some things that you kind of, like, give a green card to. Yeah, like, coffee obviously is... That's, like, the number one thing. If you have IBS and diagnosed anxiety, do not drink coffee. And I'm like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. So I, like, I can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. You're saying so it's so loud in here. I'm just going to sip this. Uh, so anyway, um, but, I mean, as gross as it is, I let myself have the coffee because it regulates me. Because That's good. one of the many symptoms, like, because there's three different kinds of IBS. There's yeah. IBS A, IBS D, and IBS C. Mm -hmm irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, diarrhea, and altering. And altering is like, you get all of the above. Love. So, I love when you get everything. So, of course. It's a variety pack. I <laughs> have been blessed with altering. And it's never like, oh, like a couple days a week, I'll be like, I know I'm, I'm going to be constipated these days. And yeah. these days I'll have like diarrhea or whatever. This is so gross. Um, no, this is it. This is also, let's quick tangent. Like Girls models, poop. Girls poop. Also, <laughs> models that eat... Uh, there's an underbelly to this. There's models that shit, and it happens. Yes. And if it doesn't happen, call your doctor. But also, like, <laughs> it's a part of it. But I think it's yes. important to talk about, too, because, like, yeah. obviously, like, if that's helping you at all, like, mm -hmm. stabilize that, you have to remember, one, we're human. Like, yeah. Also, we don't eat cinnamon buns every day, y'all. We're doing this for the video. I would love to. Yeah. But that's not good for me. It's not. It's just not what it is. But, like, the yeah. fact that, you know, things like this, you found loopholes mm -hmm. that actually help you with the symptoms that most people could not handle. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's definitely important to like just regulate it, but it's also like, I do say this sometimes, like when I'm on my period and I'm like, I'm tempted by like a food, I'm like, I might as well just eat it and enjoy myself because I'm going to be in pain anyway. So like, <laughs> right, because you're choosing when I'm, between them, like, yeah. I, need, I really want to eat this food and I Yeah, can't. I'm like, I might as well. Like, right. so with coffee, I'm like, yeah, it's not the best thing for someone with my disease condition, whatever you want to call it, but like it does help one of those symptoms that like need that little push. Right. My balance is pretty much just me being very aware all the time of what I'm eating and then when it is my time of the month, I just kind of like I let myself have your moment. Have my moments. I'm not You're like, also in like I'm not double too, pain. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too hard on myself. But if I'm eating something I know I shouldn't when it's not that time. I'm a little bit upset with myself. Yeah. I'm like, you really should have had a little bit more self-control. Well, that's also, like, playing yourself in a way. Uh -huh. Like, you decide. I think moderation is so important. Because I also want to be vegan. Like, stick to tofu. Like, just be better. Because I know, I'm sure that's... Not only is it great for the environment and, like, everyone. Um, it, it could be better for my body. Because I have to limit myself on, like, other foods. I don't get as like much nutrients and stuff like protein so i'm like well maybe i do need to eat meat like in order I to get those things that's totally fine to have that conversation too with yourself and yeah. like, look like i know my primary diet i mean i have a really diverse diet because i have so much access to so many things mm -hmm. i'm really grateful for that it'd be ignorant to say like you'll figure it out kelly it's like yeah. well, then you're like you're jeopardizing the quality of life that maybe yeah you don't want to because food should be like a happy place if you're happy mm -hmm. And 
you know, you can still be conscious of like sustainability while eating mm -hmm. other things. Yeah, just yeah. about like and that's you know, kind moderation of what I, as well. Yeah, it's kind of what I'm like going for, and I'm I'm still figuring out like the whole like meat yeah. situation because I'm like I don't I don't know because my body is so different than other people with IBS. Mm -hmm. I don't want to like just go off of like what people are saying online because they are so different because right. those same people are like yeah just have a banana smoothie and like. <sighs> They're like, don't, okay. drink coffee, don't drink coffee and have a banana smoothie. And you're like, uh, I'm drinking coffee and I could never have a banana smoothie. Never. And, uh, yeah, it I shows don't know. you that everyone's different too. And to like generalize with things like that mm -hmm. is hard. But it's so good that you're like listening to your body. And mm -hmm. it's really what it is. It's just like listening to your body at all times and yeah. seeing what you need. Yeah. It's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's really hard, especially when it comes to like, like binge eating, I guess. Yeah. Be there are foods that I don't eat, can't eat try and stay away from whatever and I guess there are some days where my body's like you're gonna crave it right now and you're like oh thanks I'm like <laughs> okay and then I'm I want it and then I just kind of just keep going and right. I'll just keep snacking and then an hour later I'm like wow why am I so bloated crazy crazy concept crazy concept like there are some studies that like show that like if you have IBS your period is, like, five times worse than, like, the normal period that a woman gets. Like, the pain is, like, five, ten times more heightened. Wow. So, like, when people are like, wow, I have, like, really bad cramps. I'm like, really? Do you? Mm -hmm. Do you have cramps? Like, I'm not going to, like, diminish your, <laughs> your, your cramps. pain, your cramps, but, like, tell me more about <laughs> how you're in pain. Like, you're like really? It's a series of different pains. Like, like that's cool. <laughs> I have red spots all over my chest and stomach because I'm in pain. Dude. Like, anxiety and IBS kind of go hand in hand mm -hmm. like you can't have one thing without the other in my right. case like so when I'm anxious about something I get a stomach ache if I get a stomach ache from like eating a food I get anxious over the fact that I have a stomach ache and it just like I just spiral right and there are like when I'm anxious about something I know some people won't eat right. when they're anxious I will binge eat so if I'm anxious I'll just like snack like, I'll, mm -hmm. like, get chips or popcorn or something, and I'll just literally just keep going. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's fine, and then other times, depending on how anxious I am or if I'm having, like, a bad stomach day, it'll be really bad for both my anxiety and my stomach. And when I'm in pain, it is my body's fight-or-flight mode, and that's why I get the rashes, and I, I sometimes hyperventilate a little bit because I'm like this I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> I'm in a lot of pain. Yeah. And I'll start sweating, and I there... I cry all the time, like, not even, like, it's just as a cancer moon, I cry all the time. Cancer moon? But vibes. when my stomach, like, really hurts, it's really just, it's defeat because I'm, like, no matter what I do, no matter what I, like, try and eat and get my body used to, there's always going to be some sort of a pain, like, bloating, constipation, whatever, and it just, it's so frustrating. And it makes me anxious because I'm like, am I going to be living with this for the rest of my life? Am I going to have to be careful around all of the foods forever? Because I could eat bananas and avocados when I was younger. So I guess my body just developed it, which sucks. So I'm like, okay, so maybe in like 10 years, you think I'll be able to have a banana? Right. A single banana? I would love that. But I don't know. It's, it's really hard like trying to navigate like... Wanting to make my anxiety feel a little bit better, and I guess with that, it's like anxiety, like to control it, I just let myself cry, and I let myself eat. Like when I when I cry and get upset and I'm anxious, I usually like to go to chocolate because I'm like that. Uh, chocolate helps everything, but the sugar, the milk, there's always something, and it it's hard trying to find things that I can like indulge in. To satisfy that craving, mm -hmm. but also know that, like, it may or may not sit well with me. And it's something I'm still figuring out, which sucks so bad. Mm -hmm. What would be your, like, top advice for people with IBS that are watching? Because I feel like that's important. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I guess it really, you just have to figure out what works for you, which is, like, so cliche. Like, because I've watched videos on YouTube with people with IBS, and they're like, you should and shouldn't eat this, blah, blah, blah. And they would, th those people also recommend avocado toast and bananas. And I'm like, okay, but I really think it's just a matter of, like, doing the research on, like, 
what you should and shouldn't eat, what, like, they say, and then testing it out. Like, yeah, you're going to be in pain as you test things out, but it's important to figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for mm-hmm. you um, because everybody's different. Right. Everybody is different. So it's it's really just you have to navigate it yourself, go through the pain, go through all of the symptoms, and, like, just stock up on, like, peppermint tea, gas X, mint Tums. They will truly be a lifesaver. What's your favorite foods? My favorite foods that I can eat or my favorite foods that I can't eat? <laughs> like, which ones can um, you tolerate and which ones are you kind of like, get out my face? I love pasta so much. It's so Can you tough. do gluten-free pasta? Yeah, I can. And I could totally do, like, vegan cheese, like, dairy-free cheese, which is great. It's fine. I love pasta. I love pizza. I love ice cream. But, thankfully, I have found some great dairy-free ice cream like so delicious yeah. mint chocolate chip we oh love so my delicious. god it's so, so good it's so good that is it's one so delicious it's so delicious cheers and thank, thank you, you for sharing everything i hope this like, yeah. helps someone and i hope I'm it also so shows too. people that like your life isn't controlled by ibs like mm-hmm. you're making decisions for yourself that are according to like all facets of your life and mm-hmm. how can it affect you positively negatively yeah but it's also like learning moderation is important and, yeah like, i think everyone one could like could use a little more moderation in their life and that and just like just opening up the conversation about like going to the bathroom yeah like, that like, is a huge part of my life oh yeah and i'm like I'm busy.